So aside from health disparities like preeclampsia, eclampsia, hypertension, diabetes, those issues do impact us. But just the stressors of being black in America, being a black woman, having a baby in America, the undue stresses that go along with that create a whole other environment for the growing fetus. In a situation where the female body can only hold so much cortisol, which is another one of our hormones, they're called catecholamines, our stress hormones. And as these stress hormones start to build up in our body, our body takes on a resistance. And so it's going to do what it needs to do to protect us as a being, but then there's also a growing baby that it needs to consider. And if the female body can't consider all the stresses that go along with just being black and pregnant in America, baby's going to come premature. Because it's so much easier to just deliver this baby than it is to die of stress, the silent killer. So taking that into consideration, when we couple low birth weight, prematurity, along with the stressors of being black in America and being black and pregnant in America, those risk factors give us even greater infant mortality statistics. So keeping that in mind, these are some of the things that we're looking at. And she had mentioned um, nutrition, the fact that moms are in food deserts. I mean, look at how many communities that have the food deserts that we're looking at, how these moms access the resources to just get good nutrition while they're pregnant. So those are some of the things, and more so than anything, that culturally competent care. If moms are not getting care from women who love them, who care about them, who treat them with dignity and respect, no matter what the situation is that they're dealing with, then they're going to impact some more stresses. The microaggressive behavior, I talked about this the last time that Dell and I did, and I think that it just kind of sparked some interest in one of the ladies that was in the audience, where women are experiencing so many microaggressive behaviors when they're trying to get basic prenatal care. So when a woman goes in for her first appointment and she gets asked a series of questions that lead her to this need for prenatal care, and in the question, simple question is, is this your first pregnancy? Mom says yes. Then she gets another question. So you mean to tell me you haven't had any more babies? No my ladies at home? No. So you mean to tell me that you haven't had any miscarriages? No. No abortions. So at this point, the stress, because you can just imagine how they just start to build up in your chest after you've already asked and answered, yes, this is my first pregnancy. And so these are the kind of microaggressive situations that women are dealing with to the point where the stress level goes so high that their bodies just can't build a healthy baby. And so the idea of a woman having to endure this appointment after appointment after appointment, finding someone who can give her the care that she needs so that she can embrace her birth experience so that we can deliver a healthy full-term baby. How bold would you be to go home and have a baby by yourself than to go to the hospital and be mistreated? Mm -hmm. Don't, if those are your options, the risk you take of having a home birth, no medical supervision, compared to going to the hospital and being mistreated. And this is what women are having to think about. What are my options as it relates to this experience I want to have for my birth? Will this be the situation that kills me? Will this be the situation that kills my baby? And so we have to think about that. We have to think about how we come together as a community, how we come together as a community of leaders, as business owners, as health professionals, individuals in our communities who know what to do and who are the resources right here locally to can help get that done. And so where you may have a small handful of women who are boots on the ground, and I commend the women who are boots on the ground because they look like me. They knock on doors of women who look like me. And so we're not in a situation to where we're trying to figure out where the support is coming from. We know where it's coming from. The question is, who's supporting them? Who's supporting them so that we can save more mamas and babies? Where are the resources coming from for the women who are out here doing the work? Because we know what it takes. We know what works. We know breastfeeding works. Yes. Exclusive breastfeeding for three months and proven to work over and over and over. And breastfeeding is our birthright. As black women, when we were stolen and brought here, we had the opportunity to do what we knew to do to birth babies, healthy mom, healthy baby outcomes, and to sustain lives through breastfeeding. Well, that was a tainted, beautiful experience that now we're having to get back to. That was our birthright. We know that. We know that if we put women in place that look like women who are getting served, that they will feel a little bit more connected to the experience and have a better birth outcome. We can see babies go to term just by acknowledging women by their first names or by their name at all. And so these are simple tasks to understand what are the stresses in her life while she's pregnant so that we can start to mitigate some of these stressors and we can rid the body of some of that cortisol because, again, it's generational for us because the healthy mom standing before you 
makes the outcome for my grandchildren. My birth outcome is a direct correlation to my granddaughter. So my daughter is a whole nother situation. These are the things that we deal with. Questioning what's going on in our society now. In California, there was an influx of abortions when the killings happened two years ago, just back to back to back, with all of the police brutality. So mamas are like, do I even want to bring a baby into this world? And correlated to what happened in slavery when mamas would smother their children to keep them from having to live lives as slaves. So now we're not even getting to the place where we're even going through the birth experience. And so we have to look at that as an overall societal issue. And how can we impact that as a society? What can we do to hold the hands of the women who are holding the hands of the women that are having these babies? 